everyone. My name is Dr. Jean-Marc Grazioli. I am uh, assistant professor of computational chemistry at San Jose State University. Uh, but most of my students just call me Dr. G. We're going to be uh, working on the chemistry of tie-dye today. So we're going to work with two different fabrics. We're going to have a, a cotton t-shirt and a sock that's made of polyester. And these two different materials have different chemistry, so they interact with the dye differently as well. So let's compare what makes up these two fabrics. Uh, on my right side, you see that we have cotton, and, and the image I chose to show you shows cotton still on the branch. So cotton, it grows on plants. It's a natural fiber, and uh, one of the main components of cotton is cellulose. Uh, so that's sort of the main part of the fiber is something called cellulose, and we'll talk more about cellulose later. But if we look at the polyester, polyester is made by people, and that's an artificial fiber. Um, and the chemistry of the two is very different, and it's going to react with dyes very differently. Um, but looking at the two, you know, if you didn't see it sitting on the branch, it really wouldn't look that different. You might not even be able to tell me which one's cotton, which one's polyester. So why don't we take a look under a microscope? All right, so now we have two images, uh, same side, you know, uh, uh, cotton on the right, uh, polyester on the left, and we see that uh, under the microscope, they still look about the same. Like, I, I wouldn't know which one is which. So it turns out we have to look even closer. We have to look at the chemical structure to really understand how these fibers are different from each other. So now uh, I've created this little cartoon representation of the molecular structures. So let's take a look at those. So if we take a closer look at these cellulose uh, fibers, these, these big molecules called cellulose, they're actually made up of smaller molecules. And the smaller molecules it's made up of are sugars called glucose. So if you've ever eaten honey or fruit juice, you've eaten glucose, right? But, you know, if I take this shirt and I taste it, all right, that's pretty gross, right? It, it, it's not sweet. This, is, this does not taste like honey, I promise you, right? So why is that? Well, all these sugars are bound up, they're held together very tightly by something called a covalent bond. And this is like the strongest bond we know about in chemistry. So it hangs on very tightly, so tightly that these individual sugars, my tongue really can't detect those as being sugar. So chemically, it's very different from sugar. And in fact, like you've seen sugar, you can dissolve it in water or coffee or something like that. If I put the shirt in water, it's not going to dissolve, right? This is different. So the cellulose, these sugars stuck to together, uh, conforms a completely different chemical structure. So we call that cellulose. So if I compare uh, this structure of the cellulose with the structure of the uh, polyester, right? Now, and again, this is a cartoon representation, but if you look at it, you notice all those little OHs. They're nowhere to be found. It doesn't have that. So the O represents an oxygen atom, and the H represents a hydrogen atom. And when you have an O and an H bonded together like this, we call it a hydroxyl group. That's the name for it in chemistry. We call it a hydroxyl. So what's interesting is that if we introduce a base, so you've heard of acids and bases, right? Like lemon juice is an acid, baking soda is a base. So if we put baking soda in there, what can happen is the base comes in, and the base actually attacks those hydrogens, and it rips it right off. So that OH becomes a negatively charged oxygen. That's an oxide, right? So we can rip off the, the hydrogen, and then we have the O minus. And then once that's exposed, that O minus can then go attack other things. And so if we put a dye in there, what, the, uh, what these O minuses that we've exposed now on the cotton can now go out and grab a dye molecule and form a covalent bond. And as I said, covalent bonds are super duper strong. So uh, basically what this does is it makes the dye stick really nicely to the fabric. So what we should see is that the cotton fabric, when treated with the baking soda, should form very tight bonds to the dye, and then the polyester can't do that, so it should form very weak bonds with the dye. And so what we'll see is that the cotton will have very vibrant colors, and it, the cotton t-shirt, and then the polyester sock should have more subdued colors. The dye won't stick quite as well, is what we should see. All right, so for this step, We've got the baking soda, and we're going to put baking soda in hot water. So I have this big bowl and this big cup of baking soda, just so it's easier to see on camera. Uh, but the kit that you have, you have plenty of uh, baking soda, and, and the much smaller cup, it'll work fine. So you want to get some nice hot water, and then uh, you really can't overdo it with the baking soda, so I'm just going to kind of eyeball this, and just you want to make sure it all dissolves. So I'm going to stir it with a spoon. So 
So far so good. Nice hot water. Alrighty. Add a little more. There we go. So that's probably way more baking soda than you actually need. But like I said, you can't really overdo it. So I went a little nuts with it. Okay. So that's all dissolved. Add a little more. There we go. All right. So now we've got the baking soda dissolved in hot water. Now we have our polyester sock and we have our cotton t-shirt right here, right? So cotton, polyester, all right? So we're gonna put them both in the baking soda, give them both a chance to interact with the base. We don't expect them to interact the same way, but you know, we wanna be good scientists about this and, and you know, give them both the opportunity to act, uh, interact with the base. So now I'm just kind of pushing it in here with the spoon just to make sure that they're both soaking up this baking soda and water mixture. So, let's see. All right, so it's evenly soaked like this. So this needs to sit for at least about 20 minutes, um, and then we should be ready to move on to the next step. All right, folks, so at this point, our cloth has had more than 20 minutes to soak in the baking soda and water solution. So now uh, it's time to first fold it into a cool pattern and then add the dye. So personally, I like the, uh, the spiral pattern. So I'm gonna do that with this t-shirt here. So first I'll take this, squeeze out the excess uh, baking soda and water here so it's not too much of a mess. By the way, notice that I'm working outside on an old box that I found. To, because, you know, dye can make a mess and you don't want to make a mess of things. So, here we go. So first, we lay the shirt out. And now we're gonna to have to fold it into a, a spiral pattern. So let's let's take a look at how to do that. All right. So what you want to do for the uh, the spiral fold is you want to pinch it wherever you, wherever you want the center of your spiral to be. That's where you pinch it. So I'm gonna go right about here in the middle for mine. So you pinch it and then you twist. So you want to grab t-shirt all the way through. Grab both sides and pinch it and twist it like that. So we're gonna keep doing this. going with this twisting motion. All right. So you see the ends start coming up. Just keep on twisting. Nice and tight. The tighter you get it, the more clean the spirals will be. Keep on twisting. Oh, I got a little piece of something here, no problem. We keep on going here. Keep going. Alrighty, this is a kind of a freeform thing. So, you know, don't worry if it doesn't look exactly like mine. It's gonna come out however you want it to come out. So now that we've got everything kind of spiraled together like this, now what we do is we put uh, some rubber bands around it, right? So this is tie dye. This is the tie part. We're gonna tie it up. And again, you could do different patterns with this, but uh, I'm going to go with, uh, I think I'm going to do three rubber bands. Let's see how that looks. Let's see here. Oh, so make sure you don't undo your spiral here. Let's see. Here. I'm going to slide it under like this. There we go. That's how you do it. Slide it like that. I think this is the best way. So stretch it out. Slide it underneath like that. Let it go. There we go. I'm going to do two more rubber bands. So I'll go one right through the middle like this. That's gonna hold that in there. One more like this. Cool. All right. So now we have, we've tied it up. All right, so that's our, our cotton t-shirt. Uh, and now I'm gonna do it with the, uh, the polyester fabric. So again, I'm using a polyester sock just something that was easy for me to find but uh, I believe you're getting a different shape uh, piece of polyester fabric in your kits but that's okay so for this one let's do a different fold so another fold is the accordion style so let's do the accordion for this one and if you've ever folded a paper fan it's pretty much the same thing so if I just fold this like that and then the other way all right see I'm just kind of folding this like I would a paper fan right 
very straightforward. This is kind of one of the easier ways to fold it. So you see how I folded it kind of like a, a, a paper fan here. So now I'll just take two rubber bands to hold this in place. Uh, actually, I'll just do one rubber band through the middle like this. Oh, there we go. So I've got a rubber band in the middle of that. So now both pieces of fabric we're going to do in the experiment on are now uh, tied up. So now we need to add the dye. Okay, so we're using uh, powdered dyes. Uh, so you have to add water to that. So follow the instructions of, of how much water to add uh, in the included kit. And I'm going to add water uh, to my uh, squeeze bottle here. So I said this is just plain old tap water, just in a plastic jar, just to, for convenience. So I will water that. There we go. And again, just follow the directions. Uh, they come with the kit for how much to add. Let's see. Uh oh. Try not to get it on your skin because <laughs> you can dye your skin with this. Alrighty. There's my blue dye. Give that a little swirl. Oh, yeah, that's rich. Now, we'll do the red dye. Okay, it's there. about the same here. Ooh. Okay. I've got the blue dye and the red dye all mixed up here, ready to go. All right, so I'm gonna give them both a swirl, make sure they're nicely mixed. Oh yeah. Now you can add the dye in any pattern you want to uh, your material, but remember that you do want to leave a little bit of space for the white. But the whole point of, of you know, the way we fold it up like this is that the dye, unless you put a whole bunch of it, it's not going to be able to get to every part of the, of the piece of cloth. So then that's how you get the cool patterns. So you don't want to go too crazy adding the dye, but what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go in an alternating pattern here. So you see how the rubber bands kind of cut this the same way you'd cut a pizza, honestly, right? This is cut into to eight parts here by the way the, the rubber bands are. So I'm just going to alternate blue, red, blue, red. But again, you know, you could do whatever you want. This is just how I want to do it. So first I'll, I'll do all of the blue. So I'll do every other one blue and then go back and do every other one red. Get the cap off here. Cool. All right. Start with this one. Cool. All right. I've done every other one in blue. Oh, I spilled a little bit, but you know, again, this is kind of this is free form art. You know, it doesn't have to be perfect. Now we'll do some red here. There we go. Nice red in there. There we go. Cool. Now it's a good idea to flip the shirt over after you do the one side so that you know your, your, your shirt isn't half dyed, right? So let me flip this thing over now. And again, this is why I'm working on a surface that, you know, this cardboard box, this is this is old junk. This doesn't need to stay nice or anything. So don't do this on, you know, your parents' nice table or something. So now we're going to do the same thing on this side. So I'll go every other one with red. Let's see. I'll try and stick with the ones where it kind of bled through. Do that one red. Do this one red. Every other one. Like that. Like that. And now we'll go blue. one here cool so fun thing about tie-dye is that you know it's kind of a surprise you really don't know what your shirts gonna look like till the very end so that's the first one so now this thing has to sit for you know ideally like 24 hours an entire day so I'm gonna take a bag 
pick it up almost like you pick up dog poop, right? So I pick up the pick up the shirt like that. Now it's in the bag, and now I can put this somewhere to uh, you know to let that dye soak in for you know ideally like 24 hours. Put that there for now. Let's do the sock. So the sock I'm just gonna do half half red, half blue. See how it does. So I'll do this side first. There's red. Flip it over. Red again. Now we'll do blue. Got some blue. Flip it over again. Some blue on the other side. There we go. So now I've got blue and red on the sock as well. Got another bag here for that. Again, pick it up just like, like you pick up dog poop at the park, right? Pick it up, bang, it's in the bag. All right, so we've got uh, both pieces of cloth dyed. Now we just have to wait, and then we're gonna take it out, rinse it out, and see how the dye did. All right, folks, so this is the moment of truth. We're gonna see how this came out. So here we have the two plastic bags. This is the polyester sock. This is the cotton shirt. Let's dump them out and see what they look like. All right. It's too soon to say how this how this went. So we're gonna have to uh, we're gonna have to do a rinse. So this is just a regular old bucket of water. Um, you know, it doesn't necessarily have to be this big, but uh, I recommend you know you do a few rinses. Uh, you 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 put the, uh, the the cloth in the bucket. You know, take the rubber bands off, swirl it around. Basically, keep, and, and the water's gonna be full of dye, but basically keep repeating it with fresh water until you no longer see dye coming out of the fabric. All right, so here we go. All righty. There's a lot of dye coming out of that. Well, I'm relieved to see that there is some, still some white showing. So I was afraid I went a little too crazy with the dye, but I don't think I did. Wow, that's a lot coming out in the water. Okay. All right, I'm going to keep mixing this around and do a few uh, fresh washes with fresh water. Uh, so I recommend you do the same. And then once I've done that a few times, we'll take a look at how it came out. Okay, so I replaced the water in this bucket. I think this was the sixth time, so it took six rinses for me, but notice how the water is pretty clear now. There's not really any, any more dye coming out of this. So now's the moment of truth. We're going to find out, you know, did the polyester not take up the dye as well as the cotton? So remember, the t-shirt's made of cotton, the sock is made of polyester, and based on what we know about the chemistry of this dye and our preparation with the uh, baking soda, we expect that the t-shirt is going to take on the dye nicely and the sock won't. So let's see what it looks like. First, here's the sock. It doesn't even look like we did anything to it, right? That just looks like a, a sock that was never dyed. Now let's take a look at the shirt. Whoa! Now we're talking, look at all that. So the cotton shirt took on the dye beautifully. And yet the sock did not. So this concludes our lesson on the chemistry of tie dyeing fabrics. So I hope you had some fun. I hope you learned some chemistry. And remember, the, the cotton has hydroxyl groups that we were able to treat with a baking soda to turn it into oxide groups that then could form a covalent bond with the dye that hangs on real tightly to the dye, right? And the polyester could not do this. So hopefully you've seen that your cotton t-shirt has much more vibrant colors than your piece of polyester cloth uh, in your experiment. So this is the beautiful thing about the scientific method, right? I can tell you that this is true and you can go test it for yourself and see that it's true for yourself. So I hope you had some fun and learned some chemistry along the way. Uh, I'm Dr. G and I'll see you next time.